Hello to you all at Bebo, I'm Jenny Valentine and I've written The Ant Colony. It's about a boy called Sam who runs away from the countryside and ends up in London, in Camden, in a house which is um, the house that I lived in, in Camden. It was cut up into flats and in each of the flats there's a different character in the book. And there's a little girl called Bohemia who's ten years old and Sam and Bohemia meet and they help each other out. Um, I wrote about Bohemia because I was walking down Oxford Street and I saw a girl in a doorway and the doorway was all black and she was wearing all black and she had red hair and I could see her face and her hands and that was it and she looked like a painting and I wanted to put her in a book. So here it is. I'm going to read a piece from chapter 3. My place at number 33 Georgiana Street was the third bell of five. All the other bells had a name on apart from mine and no name suited me fine. I found it outside a newsagent's on a notice board. A guy came out while I was standing there and stuck a postcard on with a pin. I watched him walk back in the shop before I read it. I'd been throwing my money away at the hotel for nearly a week. I couldn't afford it and I couldn't go home. I didn't want to be one of those people who moves to London and then ends up sleeping on the streets before they know it. The postcard said, studio flat, nice views, cheap rent, no DSS, two minutes tube, deposit. I phoned the number from a call box that stank so hard I had to keep the door open with my leg. I was standing at the end of my new road. The landlord's name was Steve. He lived in the basement. His skin was the exact dead texture of his leather jacket. He did the welcome tour, meaning the communal bathroom and the understairs cupboard where my, my, where my meter was, and I couldn't take my eyes off the folds and creases in his cheeks. The electricity was pay as you go, same as the rent, which Steve kept telling me was way below the going rate and which has to be cash in a brown envelope, I'm guessing so he could stuff it under his mattress and not tell anybody. I handed over half of everything I'd ever saved for the first month's rent. The whole place was pretty trashed, but it felt so good to shut the door to my own room and stand with my back against it. It could have been exactly what I'd dreamt of doing with the money all along. The place had a little kitchen and a bigger room for everything else, like eating and reading and sitting and thinking and sleeping. The floorboards were painted in thick black gloss with stuff trapped in it, hairs and fluff and sharper lumps like bugs and amber. There were two massive windows, floor to ceiling, that flooded the place with street light all night long and let in the sounds of outside. You're never alone with noise and light, not completely. From my windows I could see straight into other windows, then across the pattern of rooftops and into the tower of a Greek Orthodox church and down onto the street below. I spent a long time looking. It took me about a week to remember where I was when I woke up. On the first day I cleaned the flat. I found a folded up note between the floorboards that said, please let me stay in this house forever, please let me, please. The handwriting was small and spiky and distinctive, all the words joined together like one long word. I closed it up and put it back where I found it, and I felt sorry that whoever wrote it didn't get what they wanted. I felt sorry for them that I was there instead. When everything was clean, I unpacked my bag, which took all of ten seconds. Two t-shirts, three pairs of socks, a spare pair of jeans, toothbrush, toothpaste and soap, a spare jumper, a school uniform I'd taken off, the shell of my phone, and two unreadable books which belonged to Max and should have been given back a long time ago. On the second day, I hung blankets on the windows, but they kept falling down, so I gave up and learnt how to live in a goldfish bowl without caring, like everyone else. On the third... I worked out how to use the little oven. Someone else's cooking burned off the red elements and filled the room with hot, damp smoke. On the fourth, someone upstairs had a domestic in the dark hours of morning. Things kept falling past my windows onto the road below. Clothes float with grace and land silently. Our cutlery is more chaotic. On the fifth, the electricity kicked out halfway through my shower because I'd forgotten to charge my top-up key. On the sixth, I walked in on somebody in the communal bathroom. They were just a shadow behind a curtain, but they were shouting. On the 7th, I ate toast and cream of tomato soup for the fourth time that week, and I thought about home and how I could never go back there. On the 8th day, it was raining. I watched the puddles growing on the road. Why did it make me think about me and Max staying late at school? I didn't want it to. It was the rain and the books by my bed that did it. I really hope you like it. I hope you give it a try.